Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for even more shocking twists in some of our favorite horror movies. Watch out, there be spoilers here. What have you done to it? What have you done to its eyes? Number 20, Lady Van Tessel controls the horseman, Sleepy Hollow. We all probably heard the legend of Sleepy Hollow as kids, but that did not stop us from being shocked by the plot twist in Tim Burton's 1999 adaptation of the short story. In the film, Ichabod Crane is sent to the small town of Sleepy Hollow to investigate a series of murders. Halfway through the movie, Lady Van Tessel, the stepmother of Ichabod's love interest, is decapitated by the Headless Horseman. Or is she? Dear stepdaughter, you look as if you'd seen a ghost. Lady Van Tassel faked her own death and is the reason this whole beheading business started in the first place. Her revenge plot necessitated a bit of murder, and she made a deal with Satan to get her way. The horseman comes! And tonight he comes for you! Number 19, Inside Job, you're next. We don't need a motive for why crazed killers do what they do. So when masked assailants storm the Davison household and start knocking off family members, we hardly bat an eyelash. But it's eventually revealed that the intruders aren't just bloodthirsty, they're being paid, and by some of the family no less. Really? You had to do that right in front of me? Are you saying something? At first, it seems like the edgy Felix and his girlfriend Z hired the men to take out the former's family for the inheritance. And they totally did. But it's later revealed that the demure Crispin is in on it too. I can't believe you were in on this. <sighs> Come on, babe. You do know how broke we are, right? Our lead protagonist Erin initially has trouble accepting her boyfriend's shady dealings, but considering what she went through, we don't blame her for breaking things off in the bloodiest way possible. Number 18, you're in a cult, Kill List. If you missed one of the strangest and most upsetting horror movies of the last 20 years, don't worry, you're not alone. Kill List didn't even make back its $800,000 at the box office, but the folks who did see it experienced a wild ride. The movie follows Gal and Jay, two British military guys turned hitmen who take on a contract that ends up proving disastrous. Sam Rapp. Thank you. Kill List doesn't have just one big twist at the end. It's more of a slow burn with multiple twists along the way, and a plethora of gory, disgusting horror to boot. Just a librarian. Who for? <laughs> this is not fair. I'll show you enough. Yeah. The violence will leave even the most strong stomached reeling, and the end will leave you gobsmacked. Number 17, Lori is also a killer. Happy Death Day. Groundhog Day, but make it horror. Happy Death Day is a fun, twisty romp of a horror movie. It centers around a girl named Tree who is stuck in a time loop where she is murdered by a masked stranger before waking up back at the start of the day. She eventually begins using her situation to identify her killer. So I'm just supposed to keep dying until I figure out who my killer is? She eventually does, believing him to be a serial killer on the loose. After she kills her would-be killer, she celebrates with a cupcake from her roommate Lori and goes to bed, only to wake up still in the loop. The cupcake was poisoned, and Lori was trying to kill her the entire time. Talk about a bad roommate. You killed me. What? You poisoned it. Number 16, The Man in the Walls, The Boy. Little children in horror movies are scary enough, but little doll children? Yeah, count us out. In 2016's The Boy, Greta travels to the United Kingdom to be a nanny to an elderly couple and their eight-year-old son Brahms. Turns out, however, Brahms is not a human child at all, but a porcelain doll the couple treats as though he were alive. As strange events begin to happen around the house, Greta starts to believe the doll does have a human spirit. But when someone smashes the doll, the truth comes out. The real Brahms, who died in a fire decades ago, had been living in the walls of the house controlling the actions of the doll the whole time. Number 15, Josh is possessed, insidious. The things that happen to us as children really do follow us to adulthood, don't they? 
Insidious explores that theme of lingering childhood trauma and takes it to its natural, twisty conclusion. When they discover that their son Dalton can astral project and is being possessed by demons, parents Josh and Renee learn something terrifying about Josh's own past. The reason I knew to call Elise in this situation, the reason I know her so well, is because I called her myself once, years ago, to help you. What are you talking about, Mom? He has the same ability as Dalton, and when he was a child, he was tormented by the ghost of a terrifying old woman. Josh has to face the old woman again to save Dalton, and once he does, it seems like everything's fine. But at the last moment, we learn that Josh didn't win. Possessed by the old lady, his reign of terror begins. Why did you do that? Why would you do that to me when you know how I feel about that? Why? Number 14, Howard was right. 10 Cloverfield Lane. What would you do if you woke up chained in a room with some guy you've never met telling you that you can't leave because of the poisonous air outside? Would you believe that guy? I'm not sure yet if it's chemical or nuclear, but down here we're safe. So where are we exactly? That is the central question that 10 Cloverfield Lane puts forth. After a car accident, Michelle wakes up to find herself in an underground bunker with only her captor and his assistant for company. Her captor, Howard, insists that a world-changing event is underway, and she cannot leave the bunker. Michelle doesn't trust him, and as an audience member, it's doubtful whether we should either. Michelle eventually escapes, and comes to learn that Howard was 100% right. Also, aliens exist. Number 13, it was the devil all along, Fallen. If I go back to the beginning, that'll take forever. So let's start more recently. Fallen begins with Detective John Hobbs telling us about the time he almost died, or so we think. This Denzel Washington supernatural horror film takes themes of possession to the world of police work. The voiceover at the beginning of the film is said in Washington's voice. So as we watch Hobbs investigate a series of occult killings, we think he is the narrator. The killer is revealed to be a demon named Azazel, who can possess most human bodies. In the end, we think Hobbes has overcome Azazel, concluding the story of how he almost died. But no, the voice that's been speaking has actually been Azazel the entire time. The demon didn't die, taking over a nearby cat. Oh, you forgot something, didn't you? At the beginning, I said I was going to tell you about the time I almost died. See you around. Number 12, no happy endings. Drag me to hell. You can't always get what you want. Sometimes what you get is a giant hand dragging you straight to hell. In Sam Raimi's 2009 comedy horror masterpiece, happy endings are not in the cards. But that doesn't stop you from hoping that maybe, just maybe, our protagonist will get away from the cursed button that haunts her. As Urdu Sion paid. <sighs> Christine's curse involves a three-day torment before a demon drags her down to the fiery pits below. But at the end of the film, you do really believe that she's figured out how to beat it. It's only when her boyfriend attempts to propose to her and gives her back her cursed button in the process that we realize she's actually lost. Oh my god! Hey, hey, hey! <laughs> hey, hey, hey! Stop! Hey, hey. Oh god! <laughs> Number 11, sequel prequel, Final Destination 5. Final Destination 5 mainly follows the characters of Sam and Molly as they try to outrun the inevitability of death. The plot takes them through bridge collapses, meat spits, and more before they believe they finally survived. It's gone. You killed him. So does that mean I get Block's life? <laughs> yeah. Yes, <laughs> I, I do. At the end of the film, they end up on a plane. Vole Airlines Flight 180, to be exact. On board, Sam overhears a flight attendant telling someone that a passenger who was removed from the flight said they had a premonition that the plane would explode. This is, of course, Alex, the main character from the first Final Destination movie. A surprise prequel is the best kind of prequel. I got you! Ah! 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 
Number 10. The Alien Makes It to Earth – Life when Life came out in 2017, it didn't necessarily receive rave reviews from critics or audiences. But this sci-fi light horror film deserves a second look, in particular for the way it handles its last act. Toward the end of the film, only two members of a crew sent to investigate life on Mars are left. David and Miranda are fighting against a dangerous alien life form. They decide David will kill the alien in space and Miranda will return to Earth. This is Dr. Miranda North, Black Box recording in case of death upon re-entry. The creature killed four of the six ISS astronauts with a fifth, Dr. David Jordan, presumed dead, carrying it out into deep space. A pod crashes on Earth. It turns out to be David and the alien instead of Miranda. The last thing we're left with is David pleading with the people who find him not to open the door and unleash the alien's havoc. No! No! No, no, no! Number 9. Lucas is Dead. Good night, Mommy. A clever movie twist is one that fools you in the moment, but opens up the world of the movie once you understand what's been going on. And Goodnight Mommy has one of the cleverest, saddest twists of the last 20 years. The look is flowing. Wenn er was will, dann soll er mir dasselbe sagen. Es muss doch mir the movie centers around twins Elias and Lucas who become convinced their mother is not their mother after she returns from surgery wrapped in bandages. Strange events lead them to trap the mother in the house and threaten to burn it down. The mother then reveals to Elias that Lucas died in an accident before the film's beginning, and Elias has been hallucinating him the entire time. Du bist nicht schuld, dass der Lucas gestorben ist. Du bist nicht schuld am Unfall. The reveal changes every idea you have about each character and makes you reconsider everything. Number 8. The narrator is the real madman. The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari If you're gonna dip into the world of silent cinema, The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari is a wonderfully twisted place to start. The movie functions as a long flashback, as a man named Francis tells the story of a hypnotist named Dr. Caligari who manipulates a man with a sleep disorder into committing murders. The story ends with Dr. Caligari in a mental health hospital, but that's not the real ending. After the story, we learn that Francis, our very own narrator, is actually the true madman. Dr. Caligari is the hospital director, and Francis is the patient actually living in the fictional Caligari cell. Number 7. The Husband Isn't Really Dead – Les Diaboliques Obviously, Psycho is one of the most important horror films of the last century. But what about the film that helped inspire Psycho? At first, the 1955 French film Les Diaboliques seems to be about two women, a wife and a mistress, who band together to kill the man who causes them both so much pain. Il pas trop souffert. Rendu compte de rien. Si nous partions tout de suite, si on le ramenait cette nuit. Notre alibi. Quand on le retrouvera, il faudra que nous puissions prouver que nous étions ici le jour de sa mort. But the crime at the center of Les Diaboliques turns out to be much more sinister. The husband, who we believe to be dead fairly early on in the film, actually never dies at all. The truth is that he and the mistress have concocted a twisted plan to torment the fragile wife to death. Diabolical indeed. Il disait que avait le coeur fragile. Mon pauvre chérie, t'es tout mouillé. Charge-toi vite. Number 6. The Mother Appears. Barbarian. When it comes to twists that blew our minds, Barbarian is near the top of the list. Zack Kreger's wild ride of a film starts out like a regular horror movie, but quickly changes gear. When Tess arrives at her Airbnb to find it booked by a man named Keith, we think we see where things are going. But despite everything we know about horror movie tropes, Keith isn't actually the villain here. The twist comes when Tess follows Keith down into the bowels of the home's basement. Why did you come down here? No, why? Why did you come down here? She finds Keith, but she also finds a naked, terrifying-looking woman simply known as Mother. The film immediately smash cuts to Justin Long of all people, leaving us to wonder what just happened. Number 5. Su Yun was a ghost the whole time. A tale of two sisters. The secret ghost is a well-worn horror trope, from the others to the sixth sense. But it takes a smart movie to do the trope well. A Tale of Two Sisters is one of the better films to do it. 
At the beginning of the film, Soo Mi leaves a mental health hospital and heads home to her father, stepmother, and sister Soo Yun. The family's dynamics are complex and often terrifying, but not as terrifying as the reveal that comes towards the film's end. Soo Mi learns that she has dissociative identity disorder and that her sister Soo Yun is a figment of her imagination. Soo Yun has been a ghost the whole time. Number 4. Black Phillip is Satan, the Witch. Throughout the course of The Witch, we're left wondering what's real and what's not. But in the end, writer-director Robert Eggers lets us know exactly what to believe. The film follows a family who's banished from a Puritan settlement, after which strange, possibly witch-induced events begin to occur. Furthermore, the young twins of the family start to say that the goat, Black Phillip, is speaking to them. We're led to believe the twins might be making this up until the very end of the movie. Black Phillip materializes into the devil while speaking to the family's eldest child, inviting her to live deliciously. What's that like to live deliciously? Number 3. It's All in Patrick's Head, American Psycho. Investment banker, serial killer. What's the difference, really? Not much when it comes to American Psycho. Throughout this 2000 satirical horror masterpiece, Patrick Bateman tortures and kills a number of people in brutal ways. One of these people is his colleague Paul Allen, who he murders with an axe. Because it's not just about the pleasures of conformity and the importance of trends, it's also a personal statement about the band itself. Hey, Paul! But towards the end, as Patrick tries to confess to his murder spree, we learn that Allen is actually alive. Patrick might have never actually killed anyone and has been hallucinating his crimes for the entirety of the movie. This twist drives home the film's commentary on yuppie culture and toxic masculinity. But even after admitting this, there is no catharsis. My punishment continues to elude me, and I gain no deeper knowledge of myself. Number 2. Jacob is Dead – Jacob's Ladder When it comes to war movies, horror goes hand in hand. And the 1990 film Jacob's Ladder really drives that comparison home. The film stars Tim Robbins as Jacob, a Vietnam War vet, and flashes back and forth between his life during and after his service. A number of strange, disturbing events occur throughout the film, leading to the most terrifying reveal of all. We learn that due to a military experiment gone wrong, Jacob was killed by friendly fire. Everything that we've seen after his time in Vietnam has been some hallucinatory, horrifying fever dream. He looks kind of peaceful, the guy. What a hell of a fight, though. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. The Cult Rosemary's Baby Throughout Rosemary's Baby, Rosemary starts to suspect that her neighbors belong to a satanic cult that wants to use her unborn child for evil. She's almost there, but not quite. This 1968 horror flick is one of the very best, and its twist ending is one of the reasons why. After Rosemary gives birth, she's told that her baby was stillborn. But in the last scene, she discovers not only that her baby is alive, but that her husband Guy is not the father. When she discovers a satanic cult honoring her child, she notices that he has unusual eyes. The devil's eyes, one might say. Rosemary has given birth to the Antichrist. What have you done to him, you maniac? Satan is his father, not Guy. He came up from hell and begat a son of mortal woman. Hail Satan! If we missed any of your favorite surprising twists, let us know in the comments below. This confession has meant nothing. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.